to the Face It Show for the North American region. You are here with me. I've got rid of all the other people, sent them to Kiev for Star Ladder. And we're going to be going through three matches today, first of which is going to be Cloud9 versus Luminosity. Also, you may have heard that we have announced our finals for the next stage, stage two. It's going to be in Valencia in Spain. If you haven't been there, then I hope you can make it down there. There's Paella, there's sand, there's beach, and beaches normally come with water and things like that. Let's have a quick look at the matches we're due to have today. Again, this is the first of three matches. Cloud9 versus Luminosity will be on Inferno, followed by Nylon versus Elevate on Cash, then Cloud9 versus Team Liquid also on Cash. So, again, we can also have a look at the format just in case you are a new viewer to see how the league works here. Again, it does cross multiple regions. So, you've got North America with six teams, Europe with eight teams, Oceania with six teams. They'll play each other in a round robin format. North America and Europe will play each other twice. You have a home and away system there where the away team vetoes two maps and the home team picks from the remaining five. And Oceania will play each other once. So, we are going to be into the knife rounds. C9 versus Luminosity here. Let's have a look at these knives. Let's go deal with the Plain Jane. They actually have a flank going on. Although Luminosity are wise to it. It's all kicking off now. Uh, it should be Cloud9. Shroud hasn't been tagged yet. And he will deliver the killing blow, so to speak. So Cloud9 starting on the CT side. Cloud9 looking like a much improved team since their since their roster changes, since they've had time to work on things as this new unit. I am looking forward to seeing Liquid as well, because they've been uh, heavily focused. So you can see Cloud9 quite favoured here, seventy five percent on e gaming bets, or seventy four if you're going to be completely accurate, and just below seventy on CS:GO Lounge. Luminosity will be looking to cause the upset. And again, you've seen uh, Peter recently, he's been sounding off on Twitter saying that he feels like Luminosity should have had an invite to uh, Montreal over some other teams which have, namely CLG, his ex-team. Maybe some, uh, some Morton Salt going on there. Let me know if you think he has a point or two. <coughs> but it will be Luminosity to start on the less favoured side, the T side here. Let's see what CLG have in the bag. Sorry, Cloud9, excuse me. Cloud9 sending three over towards the B bomb site straight away. Luminosity with early presence towards second mid. They're going to keep Peter, keeping an eye on things towards B, making sure their options are available to them. And again, if he spots three people then, then they may go for a super fast charge. Luminosity, um, sorry, Cloud9 in fact, have left, have left Arch completely open. The rotation's finally coming in as they start to push two people down Banana. So if Luminosity go for a wrap here, then uh, there may be time for Cloud9 to do something about it, but it's going to be Shroud trying to hold things down here. The bomb's going to be down on the site, which means the full rotation comes into the CTs, but it's uh, Luminosity finding the frags here. Four versus two, only Sean and Freakazoid remaining. Sean with no armor to speak of otherwise. Just down to Freakazoid now. He still hasn't been touched. Got a bit of Kevlar. Doesn't have a kit, however, but he's already on the site, so that's not going to be a big concern. He just needs to find the frags and make sure he doesn't get traded. He's going to have to... You can see he was, he was a bit hesitant there. Going to stand up next to the wall so he can try and pop somebody's head off and then retreat if he needs to. But uh, Luminosity holding the right angles. They basically forced Freakazoid to come out into the open with no cover whatsoever. Then a trade fragger pops out, takes him down. First round to Luminosity. Cloudine, of course, going for the force. Going for the force, of course. Double scout. Shroud and Skadoodle. Let's have a look at way, where they are headed. We've got Shroud on the A-bomb site and Skadoodle over... To A as well, in fact. So they're putting double scout towards mid and then a stack elsewhere. Skadoodle gonna see and Skadoodle, Skadoodle gonna skedaddle. Retreat back to the site, but you can't expect many frags to go down here if they're stuck on the site. If Luminosity choose to commit. But the question they're asking is is there a stack? And if so, where is the stack? I don't know if they had seen Shroud prior to this point right here. Pyth down to 27 HP, and he's one of the ones rolling with the Gilil, so maybe he should throw that over to a teammate and rock with the Mac 10 That might be a better idea because uh, they, they will be able to tank a little bit of damage. But they're all going to just uh, head over to the stack, in fact. So the scouts have done the job, and Cloud9, the patient players, 
Are going to get those close quarters engagements. There's the first one. Freakazoid taking down Anger, getting traded by Lex. And now the Triangle of Doom comes out from the remaining Blaze of Cladine. And this has worked down to a complete treat there. They, oh, the patience. They didn't move a, a muscle. And Luminosity were putty in their hands. They did exactly what Luminosity, what Cladline wanted them to do. Play into the stack. So Luminosity, you have to figure that they must have thought the stack was on A. Because once the scouts are forced into the site, you, you can rush them down. Unless you think that you're going to be uh, exposed by a stack elsewhere. So Cloud9 played that perfectly. Luminosity, like puppies in the mouth of a tiger. Now they're going to go for the eco rather than the force. And Cloud9 will enjoy those terrorist weapons. They'll pick up the MP7. They'll pick up the, uh, the Galil. And nothing will find himself an M4. Three diffuse kits on the Cloud9 side. As Luminosity are all stacked over towards A for the time being. Only two CTs towards B. It's all quiet on the Inferno front. You can't fancy Luminosity's chances here. You've got Skadoodle with an advanced position with the scout. But again, if he gets that information, they'll have the rifles ready to do the cleanup. Should he go down. You've got Shroud with support on, uh, on the pit area. He's going to have a look, and that's, he's going to pay for it. Maybe an overextension there. This, this didn't go his way, and now they've lost um, the quad area completely. We're going to see a plan here for Luminosity, and they've got a man advantage, and they've picked up an M4. And there's a scout, should they want it, they find it. Two Cloud9 players over towards quad. Sorry, Arch. And Freakers away will push. But they're all going to be facing numbers. Jumping scouts. Shoe is on the other foot now, and they don't like the fit, do Cloud9. Skadoodle. Versus rest of the world, and he is going to choose to retreat here, as it has not gone in Cloud9's favour. And I feel like if nothing doesn't pick that angle there, and they push, he's probably going to get the spray down, and he's probably not going to go down. It doesn't mean that him peeking was a mistake, but if he doesn't peek there, then at least he takes on that player. Maybe they fear being overwhelmed, you know, lack of information, wants to see what's going on, but he got one tat, and then they lost the round, so... Back and forth we go. Have a look at that. Cloud9 in a weird place. Nothing with 1,400. Th Freakazoid with 3,200 in the bank. See, nothing went for the M4 in that round. And then that's another question. Maybe maybe there's something to be had there with uh, using the M4 from a longer distance so they don't, don't pick it up. If you're playing it from a, a place where you can get one type. I don't know. If you want to nerd out on... Uh, micro decisions then you can. Skadoodle was just a millimeter away. They gave that player a haircut. You can see Freakazoid holding the pot flash here which bounces off the barrels. It's a very nice pot flash which is uh, very common to the B bomb site. But often in this situation you'll see um, the e coin players throw over the terrace roof to have an aggressive peek into Banana but Cloud9 is going to play a little bit differently. And Shroud and Skadoodle have spent a bit more money than the others. We're getting started with a bit more than some of them. You can see it's all kind of averaging around 2,000 at the moment, so... Let's see what the plan is here. Peter's made his way up to Arch, and nothing's on the wrong side of Arch at the moment. And Sean's going to be the first to go down. And uh, the Rap is coming in now for Pike, but yeah, he needs to move fast before he gets flanked himself. Take B with a man advantage. Nothing in the smoke. He's going to push in timely fashion. He goes straight for the head. That's really good. But uh, he will get traded straight away. So two versus two. Stroud upgrading his uh, 5.7 to a Galil. So a Galil and the scout to go for the retake here versus the MP7 and P90. Everybody with armor. Stroud with no helmet. So he will fear these guns. Headshot's not necessary. LG will clean up the remaining two players. Get a bit of an upgrade there. Picking up the AK for Lex. And uh, we'll see if the buy comes out here for Cloud9. Again, the money's still a bit ropey, but I don't think they're going to want to let Luminosity get any more rounds here. So they're going to go for the force. You can see it's a force because of how limited their nades are. Again, this is one of the key maps where I think we were, we were talking about it with Threat yesterday of how you can abuse these smokes. But the smokes they have got, they know their smokes on the top of their priority list here. Going for somewhat of an aggressive uh, position on Banana. Again, that's that smoke that exists from NIP. Likes to throw from uh, CT spawn. Pipe's just fishing in uh, B Banana at the moment. Three-man stack from Cloud9 on quad with a decoy over towards Arch. 
safety in numbers. I do like the small things like that. You have to wonder if they had full nades, even without the orb, they probably would have had a slightly different formation. So Luminosity trying to trying to bait the uh, the nades here from Cloud Nine, but Cloud Nine still have two smokes in the bag. And there goes one of them. But B has been left open for now. There's a pop flash coming in, very very timely. Pop flash coming in before the smoke. So even if they try to push it, that flash is going to be a pain in the bum. And I think that's a reaction to the smoke on CD you saw there. The push may come in from the T's. They're still teasing, maybe offering a fake. But Cloud9 have the third person towards B. And in fact, Luminosity are going to rotate towards A. Problem is, there is somewhat of a crossfire in the pit area. Can they get an early frag here? Or will they get sprayed down? Trad finding one, Trad finding two. The spray down is real. The bomb's on the floor. 19 seconds left for Luminosity to do something now. And again, that crossfire in the pit is paid off. Skadoodle taking down Peter. Only Pyth remains. And uh, again, Cloud9 have made some excellent decisions. They put the third person over towards B. Luminosity were baiting, baiting, baiting for so long in the round. So you'd say Cloud9 made the right decision, but then... Just very late on, Luminosity rotate, but the crossfire in pit was uh, unexpected and undetected until it was all too late. Shroud finding the two important frags in that spray down. And really, a spray down, a spray down in, in, that, in that situation can make all the difference there. So if you look at the scoreboard, Cloud9 one round behind now, and it's Luminosity's turn to feel the difficulty. They're going to go for the force here, armor, tech nines. P250 nade and a uh, smoke on Nathlite. Anger is without armor, as is Peter. Actually, I'm curious as to the money on Peter. He's going to have um, not much, actually. Anger's has a 1600 and Lex is on 33, which is kind of weird. Especially as Lex has got Kevlar, so we'll see what kind of buy comes out in the next round because we're going to avoid that flash completely. We've got the uh, Tech 9 train coming, and he doesn't have much help. We've got Sean Grills in the CT spawn area. And he's going to come in with a very nice smoke there. Bit of a gap for Freakazoi to see through, but um, maybe Luminosity can find some nice angles here. This time, Cloud9 will have two over towards B site, and Luminosity look committed. Although there are 35 seconds left on the clock, they've got the short angles that they want as... Uh, people with no primary rifles. Here we go. Trey's coming in onto the B site, but there's still more to contend with. The bomb should go down here. Sean's going to just waste time, hold control of construction, wait for his team to rotate, and then come in in numbers. Piss picked up a, uh, an M4. Other than that, it's not looking great for Luminosity here. But again, the worst case scenario, they've got a bomb plant. Spray downs are real. Bullets flying all over the place. Only Nafly remains. Can he get any damage done? So many guns to try and avoid the angles of. He will only... Uh, he will be unable to contribute to the one frag that his team got. Nothing heavily tagged, but again, no frag. So, 3-3. Three, three. And that's important for Cloud9 surviving with four players after a turbulent start to this half. Luminosity, some of the players were 6k+. plus. We'll see if the uh, AWP comes out. Nope, they're going to go with 5 AKs. And it's not the easiest map to AWP on the T side of, especially when you spend so much time behind smokes. You, it can just be a complete waste of money. But maybe it'll come out later just to, submit to, just to uh, switch things up. So, Cloud9 with the standard CT setup here. 3A, 2B. Going to have that smoke down banana straight away. So, they're going to give uh, Luminosity minimum chances. That fly's got himself up um, very quickly. But, again, Cloud9 looking so much more coordinated than we've seen him in the past. The Molotov to force people back, then the smoke comes in. Wasn't a perfect smoke, and the Molly would make it a bit weird. But anyway, here comes the push from Luminosity. We've got n the numbers game coming towards Quad through apps and Quad itself. Shroud getting yet more frags, just tapping them down. Nothing coming in for support. Shroud with a 4K in that round. He is holding down Quad. Something disgusting. So, Luminosity have a problem, and that problem's name is Shroud. And that problem resides on the A-bomb site. Even if they go towards Arch, they're still going to have to deal with him in the pit. And he is just killing them for free. Let's have a very look, quick look at the kills. He's 10 for 3 right now. He uh, has got double anyone else on the server at the moment. And Shroud will be the reason that Luminosity find themselves on the Eco. 
However, never forget, it's not just about Shroud finding the frags, it's about the whole team effort from Cloud9. It's about that Molotov in top mid, slowing the push, not letting Luminosity do what they want to. That said, Luminosity do have three rounds on the board already. Two of which came in the first three though, so now we'll see how many more they can get. Now the money has stabilized for the CTs. In fact, let's have a quick look and see what they have left in the tank. Between 1,200 and 7,000, so... Let's focus on how many rounds of luminosity get from this point onwards. So far, they're down to three people here on uh, this eco. They have one smoke and, a, and two deagles. How do they get the bomb down in this situation? That's the question. Seems that Lex was just waiting for someone to pick for information, as we saw in earlier rounds. But it's not going to happen this time, at least not in a favorable way. 5-3 to Cloud9. So Luminosity, they can they can try and smoke off the pit, for example. But then Trout's still going to be alive there. And in fact, he can, depending on how they throw the smoke, he can potentially use it to his advantage, depending on what's going on, because he could jump so he can see over the top of it. And then he may be even more dangerous. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see if they find a way to solve the Shroud problem or if they choose a different approach. At the moment, he's just shutting down that part of the uh, map for them. But then, do you just accept that you can't go there anymore? Or do you continue, continue to challenge until you break? Time will tell. Cloud9 relaxed at the moment. Not reacting really to uh, much of this shooting. Just a bit of an, a, a, a little nade here or there. Shroud's gone down. This is their opening. But how fast are they going to move? Shroud going down has caused a full rotation from Cloud9. They are reading Luminosity. They're thinking, right, they've finally taken Shroud down. Surely they think this is their chance to take the quad area. And Luminosity may be reading the same thing. It's getting a bit deaf note here. Like they're trying to outsmart each other. And Luminosity may win, but they need to move fast enough because obviously Cloud9 are going to have to rotate back towards the B-bomb site eventually. They've only, they're only a man down. Another frag, and that's going to make Freakazoid go straight back to the A site, so it's only Sean here to try and defend this. He's got nades coming in. He's going to get a molly down beyond the smoke. And here's a pop flash I was talking about, which will slow down the push. But we've got three T's past that smoke already. There are angles where it goes into pull, but never mind that. The bomb's going to get planted. Four versus two now. This is Luminosity, Luminosity's chance to limit the funds of Cloud9. And they're not even go, going to go for the push. They're going to go for the exits. Quick look at the money. You see nothing. He's putting that smoke up there because if they, if they are in that area, they are, the T's are all going to die to this bomb. So they're going to have to uh, breach if they want to save their weapons that way. And it's going to be uh, a shooting gallery for nothing. And they know what they know, that they're in trouble now. Someone's going to have to go and pack themselves. Nothing's going to get zero frags, but how many will die? Zero. So it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. I think an alternative would have been for him to play close to the smoke by the logs. Because based on where the smoke was, they're basically going to come in, going to go out of the smoke blind. And he will basically be behind them. And uh, it will not be easy for them to identify exactly where they're getting shot from. Amongst all the running and shooting, etc. But there we go. Luminosity with the round on the board. And we'll have a very quick peek at the uh, Cloud9 economy. Still a fair chunk of money in the bank. After surviving with many players, it will be hard for them to break Cloud9 just yet. Again, the timing peak's not going to go. Oh, Sukadilo is going to be... Yeah, he's going to be caught with the nade. Nothing at least gets to trade there. Going to spray while he retreats. And now we have Luminosity moving fast. This time, Cloud9 going to push Sean down Banana as Freakazoid rotates to the A-bomb site. Luminosity in control of apps at the moment. Nafly getting a, a frag onto Quad, but Shroud is still alive. Sean finding the flank there. And that's going to mean LG need to move faster. But Shroud is still alive. Two frags for him. Just down to Sean versus Lex now. And Sean's on the wrong side of the site, but Lex has no idea where Sean is. All he knows is he got a frag, a flank earlier on. 
down banana. So he could be in apps, he could be in boiler, he could be walking around to arch, he could be anywhere around the A side and that paranoia will allow Sean to get close. He'll hear the bomb planted, he'll have a rough idea of where it is, but it's a fake from Lex, which means he's giving Sean all the time in the world to get into a perfect position. Now Sean being on quad, he knows that Lex isn't in pit and that is a massive, massive advantage for Sean. Lex has two directions at least to try and look in. That will announce what's going on here. But Lex has made his way to Arch. And now it's Sean who has no idea. The information game will be won by Lex. And that will be another round in the bag for Luminosity. Now you can see Cloud9 will be stretched here. Nothing starting this round with enough money to buy a FAMAS and nothing else. He will be dropped to FAMAS. And Cloud9 have one kit going into this round, and Skudiddle is running around in his boxer shorts. Only the AWP. And he finds himself a frag. Gets tagged as well. Oh, and we had a bit of a... A bit of a peek from a second player there, but... Maybe the timing wasn't right to find it. So Sean's gonna throw the nade over towards the tree. Nephli, I think they hit Nephli, which is who, who is down to 64 HP now. Cloud9 sitting on the man advantage. Again, just hold, just chilling out, being fairly static on the CT side. They're relaxed. Although they've only got half the round so far, so Luminosity are in, an, they're in a good spot at the moment, but they're going to need more than five rounds here against Cloud9. See Freakswood holding the angle. He will hear the sound cues as well. Uh, again, that's the nades that we were talking about yesterday. I think Pi th threw it from on top of the car, which means that it hits the uh, ceiling of the map faster. It means it goes down even lower, which means more damage if somebody is in first or second oranges, depending on where it's thrown. Bomb is over towards A. Got that quick rotation from Pi, so it looks like LG are committed. 20 seconds for them to do it, and they've got no frags, and a man disadvantage, and Shroud is alive which we've seen is a massive problem here. And again, you can smoke him off, but then he can use that, use that to his advantage. Invisible wall for him. Nothing coming in with a crossfire again. Anger gets a, what is now a consolation frag of only five seconds left. Running around with his knife for no reason will get him killed for free by Sean Grills. And this is, this is what we talked about a few rounds ago. You can try and smoke Shroud off, but he can use the smoke to his advantage. As you saw there, he'll just push straight out of pit. That's fine. You give me this gap where uh, the rest of my body is covered and you've got no reason to shoot where I am. That's great. I'll get a free frag there. So they, Luminosity, need to kill Shroud somehow. If they want to take A, they need to kill Shroud. That is as clear as day to me at the moment. If we look at the scoreboard quickly, we can see uh, he is 16 for 6. And again, we're seeing just very, very small variations in, in the B hold from, uh, from Cloud9. Very small variations. But other than that, pretty much the same stuff. So we're going to see a retreat from Skadoodle towards the uh, arch area. And he's going to get super dinked by, by Pyth. But what can Luminosity do with this? They have picked up themselves two rifles. But Shroud is still alive. Shroud is still in the pit. And I cannot emphasize that enough. He hears the sand cues. He finds the frag. Peter going down. That was an important position, Luminosity being in control of quad. They've got Anger stuck on the site. Pipes, his location may be unknown as far as, as the CTs are concerned. Sean taking down Pipes though. So now it's three versus one. The Triangle of Doom is coming in. The trade is of course going to happen. And who else but Shroud holding the kit as well. Another round in the uh, bag here for Cloud9. Shroud also known as Tyrone on the filthy streets of London. Because he's got that Tyrone voice. Everyone tweet Shroud and just say Tyrone and nothing else. Just tweet him Tyrone. That'll be good. So despite the victory there, Cloud9 still a bit short on the monies. So Luminosity could still keep this close. They really need to break Cloud9 though. They need to win this round. If they win this round, then they could, they could even potentially get 8-7. But easier said than done. That is going to be an important Molotov to force the AWP well away. And they will not be expecting the AWP to be here. This is the first round where Skadoodle has played B. And again, this is what I said about the, uh, the smokes on the T when you're AWPing on the T side, is that you don't really get much action. And now it's Skadoodle's turn to be denied. We've got double nades coming in, and that's going to kill him. That's a massive play there 
by Luminosity. What a great angle. I have actually never seen a double nade over the smoke like that, which has also worked. Very nice, but they need to press this advantage. And again, Shroud is still alive, so I would suggest a, uh, a B play here from Luminosity. And Cloud9 are going to leave him. The killing machine over towards A on his own. And put two people towards B, but it's not going to work out. Freakazoid going down as well. And again, this is a round that they really need to win. Sean Gare's going to be on the AWP. Luminosity, is this going to cause him to rotate? We've got Nades coming in as well. And Shroud's coming to potentially be a cavalry. Peter and Lex are actually heavily tagged here. And this could be a problem. Still Molotovs to play with, though, which will, that should allow them to get the bomb plant. Does Shroud push through the smoke? It seems he's going to do exactly that. Flashing into Paul. He's going to get one blind player. Anger going down. Now it's three versus two. Where is Shroud? These smokes are going to go soon. Second frag coming in for Shroud. They must kill Shroud. Finally, he goes down. Peter's going to find the frag. Will... Oh, Shroud's not going to get traded. Finally. Just in time, Peter comes in to find a trade. I was getting a bit worried. And now you can see Cloud9's economy has been decimated. So this is, this is a chance for Luminosity to take this to 8-7. But again, Shroud almost ruined the party there. I once went on a picnic in a park and this dog came out of a pond and just ran through the middle of the picnic. That dog is Shroud, but Shroud's carrying guns as well. And he wants to ruin Luminosity's picnic, but Luminos Luminosity with six rounds on the T side have to be feeling confident now going into the CT side, but they want more. They have a strong opportunity to find themselves two more rounds. And that may make all the difference later on. Even on the Eco Cloud line, still with a similar setup, but it looks like they're going to send a third player over towards the B bomb site as it's very quiet towards A. And again, this is a, something you see very commonly from um, from teams on Inferno on the T side, just spamming rifle fire all over the place, trying to bait the nades from uh, the CT side as soon as possible. And Cloud9 on the Eco have no grenades left. Two Luminosity players going to be waiting over towards B and there's Shroud. Fortunately for Luminosity, the rest of the team are towards A, although it seems to be a bit of indecision there in mid going down, but now they're starting to move back towards A and I highly recommend they get there quickly because the Cloud9 team are charging in their direction. Nothing, not going to find any frags. Getting taken out from Arch. Cloud9, man advantage and two AKs in the bag. And a Deagle on Shroud. And Peter's like, dude, this is not good. Lex just being caught completely exposed with a push through the smoke from Cloud9. And that's going to be the round for them. And again, excellent play there from Cloud9. Luminosity with limited numbers. A man disadvantage. Use the smoke as a wall. Okay, we don't need to look here anymore because there's a smoke here. This smoke is a wall. We'll look at these angles. But no, Sean Gross has other ideas. I'm going to come through this smoke. You're not looking here because it's a wall, but it's not a wall. And I'm going to shoot you in the head and take the round. That is a round that Luminosity really, really needed to win. And that victory will allow Cloud9 at the spoils. Three AKs, four Molotovs, AWP on Skadoodle. And this time he's got armor. He's suited and booted. He's wearing the brogues. And it's Luminosity limited to uh, just the pistols now. No primary weapons. Four smokes, two mollies. I sincerely hope they have a set play. Skadoodle not going to hang around too long. Not going to outstay his welcome here. And in fact, he will go very passive. They know they've ruined economies. And they will use the ranges. He's just going for that pop flash into the arch area, actually. It will slow down people quite a lot. We've got team support coming in, but a wrap is real here for Luminosity. Freakazoid may be reading that it was possible. Going to come in and put a stop to that. Pushing through the smoke, but Sean Gez is not having any of this. Bombs down as well. Only anger remains. And it could have been 8 of Luminosity, but it will finish 9-6 to six in favour of Cloud9. Very nice uh, first half of the first game of the evening here in North America. And the welders have made a CSGO launch sign. Shroud, 23 and 7. And you, and I wouldn't even say, like, people might look at this scoreboard and say, oh, Shroud is carrying Cloud9, but that's not really the case. He's just the gun at the end of a funnel which Luminosity have little to no answer to. 
if that's the path they choose, then he will be the one to deliver their fates. It pretty much comes down to that. But really, it doesn't tell the whole story of Cloud9's performance on the rounds they've won. In fairness, Luminosity have a lot of rounds here. Maybe not enough to favour them in the second half. But um, I would say that Cloud9 executed well. They supported each other well with knaves, etc. But now we'll have to see what their T-sides are saying. You know, one of uh, Sean Grills is one of the uh, in-game leaders who, who studies other teams, etc. the most. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to offer on the uh, T-side. I know he's definitely one go going to want to go to the beach. Sean Grills on the Spanish beach. Sean Grills and Tyrone. White Kimbo Slice. Freakazoid. I have a nickname for Freakazoid as well, but I can't say it on stream because it's kind of rude. Not in an offensive way, it's just, uh, just rude. And Skadonglas. Skadonglas on, on the beach. All right, but Luminosity with it all to do with their European imports. They are ready to roll. And again, Luminosity, they have something to prove here. They need to show us why they deserved the uh, the invite to Montreal over some other North American teams. And here's their chance. Now, Luminosity have no diffuse kit whatsoever. That's quite interesting. They've got three players, Nefly, Anger, and Pyth, with... Uh, I can't decide whether I call him Pyth or Pith. I might start calling him, like, Banana Phone. Anyway, they're going to all have uh, armor. Lex and Peter with smokes and flashes. And again, no diffuse kit on the team. So they're expecting... If the bomb goes down, Luminosity expecting it to be concluded quickly. Maybe it will be concluded in the favor of Cloud9. First frag coming to them. And they have control of Pit very quickly indeed. Bomb getting planted. Oh, he's going to go for the fake because he knows Pit's on the site. He'll fake and shoot him in the head. And uh, Luminosity won't even get a single frag on this round. So shock and awe there by Cloud9. They just took Luminosity completely by surprise. I mean, they I was saying that, that you know, Sean, he studies the game a lot. And I feel like they just got hard countered there because the way they were so quiet, then one player, just the one player, just super fast charges out of balcony and pops a guy in pit. Like, they, I feel like they, they had a, a read on exactly what Luminosity were going to uh, provide in terms of format there. And exploited them like sweatshop workers. Four round advantage here for Cloud9. And we've got a bit of a stack over towards Arch from the CTs. And in fact, a stack over towards A with only Lex over towards the B bomb site where three Cloud9 players are headed. Cloud9 with a smorgasbord of weaponry here. Shroud with just the uh, Tech 9, however. And Lex looks like he's going to try and go for a peek. And uh, he'll get something in the eye. Cold Steel. Open B bomb site will cause a one man rotation. Which. I was going to say, they want to play the numbers game here, but never mind that. Pipe is going to find himself two frags and, uh, and a P90 as well. And he does have armor. Now, if Anger can find himself a frag here... Oh, he should have seen Freakazoid. Oh, and he's going to find the one dig through the corner of the wall. Hello and goodbye to Freakazoid. Now, it's really on. They can potentially win the round here. We have something of a hybrid heat and potty set up here. But again, these are the kinds of angles that uh, they can work with. But they don't have a kit. So really, they're going for the kills here. They, they, I don't think they were ever, at that point, like in the last 10 seconds, I don't think they were ever going to win the round. And the fun will end for Anger. Cloud9 taking the next round. So we're pretty much looking at 12-6 here before Luminosity can show us what they can do. Will they? Skadoodle hasn't bought yet. What's he going to do? Just going with the uh, armor and the pistol. I don't believe nothing's leaving with Glock. Okay, there comes the uh, MP7, so... One SMG and two rifles for Cloud9. And this is interesting, actually, because obviously they know Luminosity are going to have next to no buy whatsoever here. And that may have something to do with the fact that two Cloud9 players only have pistols in this round. 
So again, attention to detail. Pyth has left the building. Two to each side. Luminosity, I mean, Cloud9, it looks like they're trying to bait a rotation from Luminosity here by throwing, taking control of Arch, throwing all the nades, and then just leaving it. But it also just suggests a wrap. Not a chicken wrap, but a wrap through CT spawn towards the B bomb site. Lex is going to have to come and have a look and see if that's going on. And he's going to have to be paranoid about it. And it's going to leave the B bomb site even weaker. Only anger there to try and defend. Lex will find a headshot, though. Consolation frag is coming in. And again, with only three of the players of Cloud9 having rifles, they can pick up whatever falls on the floor and continue. Nath with a second frag of the round here for Luminosity. At the moment, it's just a question of frags. All he has is a P250. He has no armor. He has no shoes. No socks. And not much to say as he tries to find a frag before he inevitably dives to the bomb. Absolutely wrecked. So, crunch time here for Luminosity. It is do or die. If they lose this round, you have to say the game is pretty much over. Again, this is our first game of three today. We will see Cloud9 in action in the third game versus Team Liquid. But for now, it is the remainder of C9 versus LG. Luminosity Gaming, not the manufacturer of television screens. Two towards B, three towards A for Luminosity. Four rifles. Pipe's going for the M4A4, the rest prefer silence. Freakers will continue with the MP7. This is something that's become more common. Again, it does have very good recoil when you're moving. So you can use it to your advantage. Push coming in from Cloud9. Two man hold here in the court area, and this is what. LG need at the moment. Only nothing remains. It's been a bit of a cloud nine genocide in top mid, and he's just uh, trying to pick up the pieces. He's been fragging well for cloud nine recently, but four men might be too much to ask. No flank coming in, however, from Luminosity. They don't want to overextend. They know these boys are serious, and they don't have the cash. Go for these one v ones. Naf cleaning up. Left like cleaning up, and uh, that's a good start from Luminosity, but they're still walking a tightrope here, and it's almost at maximum weight. They won't want it to snap before they can build some more cash. Cloud9 again, three AKs and two Tech 9s, which is interesting. Lacking money despite having pretty much just set up two rounds ago. So the M4A4 of uh, Pyth has been upgraded to an AK-47. The man who made the AK-47 actually died last year, Mr. Kalashnikov himself. And it will be a Kalashnikov to get the first frag of the round. Lex going down on Banana. And uh, Anglia going to increase the aggression, get closer, get to the tree area. And Cloudine have some Molotovs at their disposal. And sometimes you can see them, Molotovs used even through a smoke, for example, it could be bounced into... Oh, anger. Got to turn off those uh, those Christmas special torrents. Stop lagging into the game. Luminosity with two players on both sides. I'll get to that Molotov point a bit later on. Cloud9, they look committed to the B-bomb site here. They have a five-round lead at the moment, and they're keen to extend it. They're keen to extend their guns into the faces of these Luminosity players. We've got the Molotovs coming down into first oranges, second oranges slash fountain, and into new box, as we call it here in Europe. Shroud tap dancing on Angus' face there. Three Luminosity players remaining. They only have control of construction. And how much will that mean as we go forward? It's good to do the kind of cross into the pool area. Bit of a gap for Nath, but can he use it to his advantage? No, he will get taken down by Scudoodle. Now Luminosity, with only two plays, they will be forced to retreat. They'll be forced to make their escape. And nothing is going to be waiting to find himself. To 
bring more pain to the side. But he will fail on this occasion. However, Cloud9 find the round. So, Luminosity getting into uh, a desperate situation here. They have two guns. They could... Oh, it looks a little bit awkward. Let's see the buy. In fact, they will manage to get the whole buyout and a reasonable amount of nades and two diffuse kits. So, not too shabby here from Luminosity. This force buy. They cannot afford to... Uh, give Lu Cloud9 any more rounds. Oh. Lex going to go for the timing nade. I'm thinking better of it. Okay, so Cloud9 potentially with an early push. They're just going to walk into the site. Take down Lex behind the fountain. They've got one more to find here. Molly's into new box. Anger going down as well. And Luminosity already being forced to save. They need to live to fight another day, but the hunt has already begun. Sean is going for the long flank through T-Apps to make sure they can just close a net on the Luminosity players. Quick look at the money. And uh, Cloud9 in fairness can't really afford to lose too many guns here, but the benefit of them taking the guns away from Luminosity outweighs the risk of losing Cloud9 guns. The net is closing more and more and more. But Luminosity find the frags, and that might put a stop to the push here from the Cloud9 players. Ooh, a bit of a battle there, but neither player will go down. So Cloud9 double the score of Luminosity here, 14 to 7. Two rounds away from victory in their first showing of the evening. Just got word that uh, Elevate have forfeited the match, which was due to come after this one for unknown reasons. I know Rush has been missing from the... Uh, from the roster for some matches. I do not know why. So maybe we'll find out more about that later on. But for now, we're into Cloud9 Luminosity 14 to 7. Anger coming with the uh, Mag 7. And he's over towards the B bomb site in the three man stack. Pop flash is coming in, but Freakazoid here's the bounce and he will find the frag. And in fact, it's going to flash the uh, CT side. Team kill coming in, but it's worth it as nothing takes down Lex as well. Anger gets the slam dunk onto nothing. Three versus three, but it's Luminosity who was stretched. That, that Max 7 is in a dangerous position as well. It's hard to challenge that with limited numbers. Cloud9 will opt for A. Pyth finding the first frag. Trying to hold on here for his team for Luminosity. But he can't get behind the pit where he wants to because of the fire. Skadoodle though, in a two versus one. 40 seconds on the clock, but the angles and the players will be many. So Luminosity hanging on by a thread here. They're, they're pretty much hanging off the side of a building and Cloud9 are trying to stomp on the fingers and they just keep moving their hands. But for how long can they go on like this? See there, but when they, as soon as they lose a round, they are screwed because they'll have the minimal loss bonus. No money in the bank. Unless I can spring, string some rounds together. Some success, successive rounds together with high numbers surviving. So the slow creep from Cloud9. They do not want this momentum on the CT side. They want to break any kind of tempo they have going. Break their hearts and souls. They want their girlfriends to cry. Freakazoid again. This guy, honestly, this, this Cloud9 side so much stronger than the previous one, but he will go down. Nothing going to trade for him. Three versus four now. Man advantage for Luminosity. Cloud9 starting to move a bit faster, but we've got the flashes coming in from the CTs. Lex will force his way through the molly. Oh, but not far enough. Those mollies can be quite tricky, and Skidoo will plant on the grill. Firmly, as Dan would say. Nafli and Pyth coming over towards the B-bomb site now. That's so unfortunate for Lex, and that may be the difference maker here for Cloud9. Very nice peek there from behind the new box. And Pyth has no option but to retreat with his tail between his legs. He will not die on his sword today. But he may do soon. 
So again, Luminosity lost the round, but also they only had one player survive, which is better than none, but not great by any means. Look at the cash on the CT side. Shroud is 27 for 11. It's a pretty monstrous performance. But again, he is the, uh, he is the gatekeeper of quad. He's in the bear pit. And no none shall pass. But anyway, match points and many match points here for Cloud9. Luminosity in a desperate situation. They need to use these flashes to uh, find some angles to get a, a jump onto Cloud9. But it's not really going to go their way. One for one at the moment. But no guns picked up. They cannot retrieve that rifle. They're forced out of the app. So they get a frag, but it will cost them one of their own. And it will cost them some of the real estate, some of the map control here. And again, it's very it's a very important part to note that they are unable to retrieve the gun because doubling the rifles here could make a hell of a lot of difference. But it may be to hell they go. 55 seconds left on the clock for Cloud9 to crush the hopes and dreams, desires, wants of the CT side. Each second's going to be very long as Luminosity tries to hold on here. P250s, 5.7s, just the M4 of Pyth, which hasn't seen that much action. Cloud9 just creeping. Creeping in the club. And it's two to a site here for Luminosity. They're gambling with stress resources. Pyth coming out, but he's going to get insta-traded by the Cloud9 side. Full rotation from, from Luminosity. Only one person. That's Peter to hold down the... Uh, a bomb site. It's going to get tagged through the smoke as he tries to move into pit as well. And now it's anger versus North America versus Rocky Balboa, kind of. I guess he was Italian, so not really. Apollo Creed, yeah. Versus Apollo Creed. We'll go with that. He's got a five seven. He has no kit. One frag. He needs to find two. Nothing is heavily tagged. He could actually do this. But they will double peak. 16 to 8 go Cloud9. And again, that I, in my opinion, that was an excellent performance by Cloud9. Again, they did give up a lot of rounds on uh, Luminosity CT side, Luminosity's T side, excuse me. But the rounds that Cloud9 won were well done. And even, even the small parts of the rounds they lost were done well for the most part. So they're looking much more solid, much more consistent than we have seen in the past. And again, this roster, I really think with Freakazoid there to help with the entry frags, uh, could do great things. So they take another three points here. And again, the next match is not going to happen. Elevate have uh, forfeited for unbeknownst reasons to me. Obviously, I'm sitting here casting. So we'll find that out and maybe uh, try and get some more information on that as, a bit, as to why they forfeited a bit later on. But for now, we're going to go for a break and then we will be back in over an hour, I believe, for the final match, which will be Cloud9 versus Team Liquid. So uh, we will see you when that's ready to go.